Alrighty, today's class is all about arrays. So um, this is like we're going to level up in terms of our programming hopefully today. So far we've been dealing with single things and single variables and modifying them. And then last week we learned how we can take our big complex process and sketches and break them down into small methods and we can do um, we can do what's called modular programs. Okay, so we can make small bits of our programs that do a specific function. Um, and we can parameterize them by passing methods in, right? The next kind of, you know, level up that we need to get in terms of our programming is being able to deal with multiple objects, right? Because obviously, when we're programming games, we don't just have a single enemy, we might have lots of enemies. Or we might have lots of things on the screen, all of which have the same um, type. So, that's how we do that is by, by using this thing called arrays. Okay, so I'm going to put up a couple of small notes about arrays, first of all. Then we'll write a, a loads of programs today to, to make use of arrays. So first of all, an array in programming, you can take a note of this into your processing sketch, right? An array in programming is, the definition is a single variable <coughs> that keeps track of lots of items. Or let's say lots of values. Okay, so it's a single variable where you can store lots of values inside a single variable. Simple as that. Now, a couple of things about arrays. The most important thing about arrays is that all of the values that you store inside a single um, variable must be of the same type. So in other words, if you make an array and your array is for storing integers, you can't put a string or a boolean into that. It must always go in as an integer. Or if you make an array of booleans, the only thing that array can ever store is booleans. Is everyone clear on that? Some things about an array then, all arrays have a size. The size of the array tells you how many elements are in the array. Fair enough, so if your array is of size 10, then that means there's 10 numbers in the array. Okay? Um, to get the size of an array, um, I should actually say instead of size, it's actually length. Okay, so we'll say every array has an L E N G T H. Every array has a length, and the length tells you how many numbers or how many whatever are in that array. Um, a couple of other things to say about arrays. This is a new symbol that we're going to use. These square brackets. This is how you refer to individual values that are held in an array. So if your array has got ten individual values. Then you use these square brackets notation to get the individual values out of the array and to put things into the array. Um, arrays have what's called an index, and the index tells you which of the values inside the array you're talking about. Okay, so anything else we need to say about arrays? Yeah, the elements in the array, the length of the array tells you how many elements are in there. So let's say our array had five elements in it. Let's say we have an array of five elements. The indices, or the indices of the array, go from 0 to 4. Exactly. So there's always one, the last element in the array is one less than the count of the array. Is that clear to everybody? So, we go from 0 to 4, and that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you see that's five elements, but it starts, the, the, we no longer refer to the first element, we refer to the, the starting element of the array, we refer to that as the zeroth element because it's the element that's stored at the index zero in the array. Is that okay with everybody? That's the theory of arrays in programming, right? We can do lots of things with arrays, keep track of lots of um, items, and uh, yeah, arrays are really cool. Okay, there's so many programs, you, you can't solve the problem without using arrays. So let's get in and write a program then that, that, that maybe creates some arrays and does some things with arrays. Okay, so let's start off a blank process in Sketch. And let's make a couple of arrays here, right? Let's just put in our void setup and the void draw. And let's make a few arrays here. Let's make um, one array here. Let's make this an array of floats. And this is the syntax for making an array. So you go float to say the type of what information is going to be held in there. Open and close square brackets like that. And then you give your array a name. Let's call this array ages, because it's going to hold the ages of uh, a number of people in the class, right? So let's go float ages equals 
Where's my equals? Equals new float open square brackets close square brackets and inside that second open and close square brackets you put the number of elements you want to hold in the array so let's say we want to make an array of five elements you put five in there like that that's it that's how we allocate an array and the syntax for allocating an array is a little different to the syntax for allocating a single variable and there's a few new bits here okay first of all you've got these square brackets and the second of all you have equals new float here after you know when we've done arrays maybe in the second semester we're going to learn how to make what are called classes and objects and we'll do a thing called encapsulation and stuff but this is our first example of what's called an object in programming this array now instead of being a single variable is an object and this object is going to contain multiple um, multiple floats. But this new keyword here is how you allocate a new object in uh, Java or processing or CGR. Okay, so we're now using it in this example here just to create a new array and put five elements into the array. Alright, so that's that's the syntax for creating an array. This array now has five elements in it, right? So the initial values that's held in those five elements are going to be all zeros. So now we want to allocate some memory, sorry, now we want to actually create some values and store them into the array. Just make sure this is in that right position. Yeah, that's kind of okay. I'll move it over a little bit. Okay, so now let's put some numbers into the array at position zero to four. We'll do it slightly long-winded way. First of all, let's go ages at position zero. And I'm just going to pick the first five people here in the first row, and let's get your ages and put them into the array. 22. Cool. Ages at position 1 is equals to? 26. Ages at position 2 is equals to? 22. And ages at position 3 is equal to? 18. And let's go ages at position 4 is equal to? 24. 24. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot of ages now. These are ages, uh, these numbers are now stored into the uh, array, the array object at position 0 to 4. Okay. Why don't we make a second array with everybody's names in it? Because this is going to be a string array. So, what I'm going to show you here is a different way of allocating and storing values in an array. And this way of storing values in an array is if you want to give the array some initial values, instead of allocating it like this, this is another way to do the same job that we just did. So, let's put some strings into this array. Strings are always surrounded with double quotes, right? So, let's get your name there. Well, and next up, Aaron. Aaron. Next up, Jack. And your name? Pierce. How do you spell it? P I E R C. -E. Yep, cool. And Brent. Brent. Okay. So I'm just going to put a note here. Allocate a five element array. Um, all initialized, these will all be initialized. Okay, this next line of code here is going to allocate a five element array. Allocate the five element array and fill it with those string values. So Niall, Aaron, Jack, Pierce, and Brendan are the five elements of that array. So of course, you see the way we do the float array here. You know, you can also do this. Instead of allocating the float array like this, you could have used the second technique for the first array, and you could go like this: float ages equals open and close curly bracket like this, semicolon and 22, comma 26 comma 22, comma 18, comma 24. So I'll just put a comment and say this also works. Okay, but we'll use the first approach here. Yeah. 
So just to be clear, what I did there is like this is another way of allocating an array and giving it the loads of initial values. So I'm just going to use this technique, you know, just showing you that this technique for allocating the ages array and filling the values will also work for, for float arrays as well. Is that okay with everybody so far? So now we've put our two arrays together and I now have two arrays with some values in it. And we've looked at the different ways that you can allocate arrays. Okay, so now let's now print out um, the values that's held in these arrays. Let's, let's, let's do a little for, for loop that's going to print out all the ages and all of the names. And in doing this, what we will do is we will, um, I'll show you how you can get values out of an array. Okay, so what I want to do now is write, write, write a little bit of code that's going to print out all the values that's held in those arrays. Now, interestingly here, you can see that the indices of the arrays, they just start at zero, go up as far as four, and they increase by one each time. So can you tell me what in programming would I use to generate that sequence of numbers, the indices of the array? Is there anything? A for loop. Okay, great. Does everybody see that you can use a for loop to generate those indices for us? Because this is just generate a for loop to generate the sequence of numbers that starts at zero and finishes as soon as we get to four. That's exactly what we use for loops for. Previously, we would have for used for loops to calculate some positions of things on the screen. Now we can use a for loop to calculate those indices, right? So let's write that code. For int i equals zero. Semicolon, i is less than. Now, what should our i be less than? Five. Uh, five, yeah. So that means it will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. As soon as it becomes 5, it will jump out and it won't do the loop. So i is less than the number of elements in the array. i plus plus. Um, okay, that will do fine. A slightly better way to write this would be to actually ask the array how many elements are in the array, and in order to do that, you can do i is less than ages dot length, like that. And that's how you get the size or the number of elements in the array. Uh, ages dot length will have the value of five. So, um, yeah, so now this is going to start i at zero, it'll go up as far as four, print out each element. Okay, so let's now print out some values. Print ln. Let's print i first of all. Then we're going to print the space character. Now, I want to get the name at position i. I want to get the name at position i. So how you do that is by using the square bracket notation. So you go names at position i. So names at position i and then the age. So while we're, while we're looking at this, and what you need to take note of here is that this square bracket notation previously, I used that to say which element I was talking about and assign a value to it. Now what I'm using is I'm using this square bracket here to say, give me the value that's held in the array at position i. Does everybody understand that? So names at position i, if i is zero, is going to be what? Would be nine. nile. Okay, so names at position i if i was two, what would that be? Yeah, yeah so it would be zero, one, two. So that's names at position two. Names at position four? And age is at position three? Will age is at position three? Will be eighteen. Great. Does everybody understand how arrays work? The principle behind them? You just use the square brackets to say which element you're talking about. And then one of the really important things is with arrays is being able to use this kind of way of, iter this is called iterating an array. In other words, doing something for every element in the array. And typically that, you'll do that with a for loop like this. Okay, so let's just make sure this program runs. Just going to run it. And uh, we'll make sure it runs. There we go. And this is what gets printed out. So you can see down the bottom it says, the index, which is basically the value i, and then it says Niall age is 22, Aaron age is 26, Jack age is, and see what it's doing is looking inside those two arrays to retrieve the appropriate values there, and then take the value out to print them out. So I'll put that code up again, and I want everyone to study it very, very carefully, just for a couple of minutes to make sure you understand exactly what's happening. <coughs>
and then we'll see if I can get you guys to write a little program of your own to do something with arrays. So let me put up that code there for a second. So first of all, just to recap, everybody understands this is allocating an array of five elements. This is also going to allocate an array of five elements, but it will pre-fill the array with these values here, which of course you can overwrite. This is an example of allocating an array of five string um, elements, where each element takes the value of these little, these strings here. And then up here, this is another way of putting things into an array just by using an assignment. The square brackets tells you which element you're talking about. And this year we, call, we refer to this as iterating the array. In other words, doing something for every element in the array. We use the square bracket notation to say which element we're talking about. And um, that's it for arrays. Does everybody kind of follow that okay? Any questions on this before we go any further? Yeah? Would that be any different to use like the enumerators or animals? Sorry, just would that be any different to use like enumerators and stuff like that? Enumerators? You know, like, you know, in C sharp, you can use uh, enums to like kind of. Oh, sorry, enumerators like in a C sharp. Enumerators are uh, like a different thing. Enumerated type, you mean? It's, yeah. It's kind of like just assigning variables to numbers. And yeah, it's numbers. kind of it's interesting you should bring it up. Enumerators are kind of used to solve a different problem. Yeah. They're used when you want to say something like. Um, my spaceship can either be uh, Cobra Mark III or a Fer de Lance, so you can specify an enum for that sort of thing. This is more if you want to store multiple, and by the way, your arrays can be huge, you know, you could have a 10,000 element of array. It's more if you want your program to process lots of data. An example, for example, if say you wanted to load up a 3D model, and your 3D model has got a thousand vertices, you might store each vertex in an array. Um, so that's kind of where you would, you would make use of this. Or similarly, if you've got 100 enemies on the screen, you'll store each enemy as an element in an array. Okay. Do you, yeah? Does it matter if you're an array very, very local or global? No, same rules apply. So they can be either local or global. Um, and that, that, that's actually not, nothing really to do with the fact that it's in an array. But uh, the same kind of rules apply for, for arrays as they do for any other type of variables. Yeah? Uh, would there be a difference between the way you filled out the agents values and the names, the, like the name, sorry, Go, sorry. say again, yeah. what, uh, would there be like, you know, the way you filled out the ages and the way you filled out the, the names, yeah, yeah would there be a, a different values? Oh yeah, that? when would you use one, so, in this example here, um, this is a, like I suppose a bit of a make up example, but I suppose if you know in advance, exactly what each element in your array is going to be, then this is a good way to fill the array. But usually what we'll do is we'll allocate maybe an array of a thousand elements. I won't know what they are until I actually go and run the thing, you know? So, for example, somebody's asking me, Jack, asking me about snow, okay? So with snow, what I might do is I'm going to have a hundred pieces of snow, and then in my second <coughs> method, I'm going to give each of the snow an, an initial starting x and y value. So I might have two arrays, one for the x's, one for the y's. And I'm just going to say, give me 100 pieces of snow, and in here I'll write a for loop to populate them. We'll do that maybe later on. Um, I want to get you guys to write something in this little program now, so is that okay? Any more questions? Are you ready to try and write something here? Okay. Right, our very first program that I want you to have a think about is this, all right? I want you to write a little program. Now assume, by the way, that these are variables. In other words, you can't assume that the, what I want to try and do here is for us to figure out which is the minimum and maximum values in this array. Um, <coughs> let's see if we can do something even simpler first. Uh, okay, here we go. Simpler program, right? We'll do the minimum and maximum average, right? First thing I want you to try and do is just write the for loop to try and figure out what the sum of all of the ages is. In other words, add them all up, okay? So write a program to, or write a for loop to just sum all of the ages together. And what we're trying to do here is maybe try and find out what's the average age. So if you remember how average works, you take the sum and you divide by the number of elements in the array. So um, do you think you could try and write that yourselves? Yeah, so there's two steps. Calculate the sum and then calculate the average from the sum. Okay, so try it yourselves and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, watch very carefully. 
and uh, pay attention if you can and follow all of this, right? Okay, look, everybody, what I'm trying to do here is get the sum of all the elements. Here's something that prints each of the elements one after another. I use I to control which element I'm talking about, okay? I is going to tell me, you know, when I talk about array element 0, or array element 1, or array element 2. So in order to sum all of these elements up in the array, why don't I just do this? Float sum equals 0. And then I can take this for loop here like this. And then just go sum plus equals 2 uh, ages at position i. Okay, done. Now, you guys need to give me some feedback. Why, what, what was missing? that you couldn't do this. What was the bit that was that you weren't too sure about? Because I thought I had explained this thing here, but obviously there's something that I um, I left out. So will you just look at it and tell me what was the missing link that we that, that I didn't explain? I think we're not quite sure. We were not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I know, I know. Um, but give, give me some feedback. Looking at this now, is it obvious that this is the solution? There's no other way you can do it. Of course, the other way to do it is is like this. Right? The long way. Huh? The long way. Well, the long way to do it, of course, you can go sum plus e sum plus equals to ages at position zero. Plus plus plus. Plus ages at position one. Plus ages at position two and so on, until your array element of 10,000 entries in the array element, uh, or, sorry, 10,000 entries, and then eventually you run out of uh, screen space or your hand gets tired from typing over and over again. You know, you have to see that, like, what, what did we do here? I used I to generate the sequence, and then each time around here, I just add sum to ages at position I. So ages at position I, everyone look up for a second. Sometimes I'm never sure if like, this is obvious and then I kind of go too quickly over things. So that's why I asked you, what was the missing link there? Um, you know, what's going to happen here, some starts out at zero initially, right? I starts out at zero. The first time around, or the zeroth time around in this loop, ages at position I takes the value of 22 because that's what the array element at position i, at the array element of position 0 is. So then I add that to sum. So sum is now 22. Come into this loop again, and then i becomes, tw uh, I becomes 1. So then age is at position i is 26. So then I add 26 to 22, and I end up with 48. And then age is at position 2 is 22. So then when i is 2, age is at position i is 22. And then I add that into sum, and eventually, you know, after I've gone through each element in the array and added each element to uh, sum, eventually sum will be the sum of all of the elements added up together. All right, does that make sense now? When, when you see it like that, does everybody now 100% understand why that's the solution? Okay? All right, okay, cool. We'll, uh, we'll just do the average. The average is very simple. Because then all I need to... Ah, the average is very simple, but there is a small trick, right? Let's go float, average... So that's going to be equals to sum divided by the number of elements in the array, which is ages dot length. And by the way, yeah, like I say, if, the, if there's anything there that I didn't explain properly the first time around, just let me now, now know and then I can, I can know for the next time. What was the missing bit or did anyone have any insight? <laughs> What's that? The job would have to use like a function like building process or like add and like Ah okay, alright. Yeah, no we just use plus. No, we're just adding it over to a float. So plus we'll just add some floats together. Um, Brendan, was there anything you could give me some yeah, feedback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah just confused. Yeah. yeah, give me some feedback. Is it variables or loops or was it the loops bit? <coughs> Why, for instance, did you put float sum? Uh, yeah, because I need to store the value somewhere, and so I allocate a variable called sum, 
and then I give it an initial value of zero. If I think of how you would do it manually, what would you do? You would add the zero one, the first one, the second one, and the third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you start out with zero, you add 22, then you add 26, then you add all in. So that's why I allocate sum, and that's why I basically add each of the elements as a sum. So that's going to add them all together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so I is going to be used, like I is used to, so if you look at the previous example, I initially is zero, then I is one, then I is two, then I is three, and so on. And so, so is it recognized uh, that's Nope, it's a variable, I made a variable called sum. It's, it's, I mean, you can call it anything. And I call it sum because we're calculating the sum, right? Uh, okay, let's try another one then, right? And this one is slightly more difficult. So you won't be able to do this one until you understand the first one. So like I say, if there's anything up there you're not too clear on, then give me some feedback now if you need some help understanding anything. Richard, is it kind of, does it make sense now? Yeah, no, it does one challenge, but it's kind of... Right. Down it and let Okay, okay, all right. So, okay, next one. Let's try the next one. Right, try and figure out which one is the... Um, let's try the oldest first of all. Let's see if we can figure out which element contains the oldest. Right, so in other words, which is the biggest element in the array? And obviously you're going to have to use loops. You will also have to use the if statement and some variables. All right, so we're going to try and figure out which one is the oldest. So which element has got the highest number in it? Then we'll be able to say, huh, is the oldest with age? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, everybody. Okay, should I should we write this together then? Let's write it together, okay? And then I'll show you a few other cool things you can do on your race. I'll do snow in a minute. We'll get to snow. I promise. You're snowman. Right, let's do this thing first and then we'll do the snow thing, right? And then I'll also show you something you cool you can do with keys. Okay. Right. Look over here at the screen. What have we got? Sum, min, max, min index, max index. Let's declare those, right? Let's delete all of this stuff here and we'll just declare all of those things and do everything in one loop. But we could do everything in lots of loops if we want to, right? So, yeah, everybody looking up for a second. Sum, minimum, maximum, what type should they be? Why floats? They can be like decimals. Um, I'll tell you why they should be floats, because the data is floats. Oh. If our data is floats, then the minimum is floats, the sum is going to be a float, because the data has to be the same, you know, this has to be the same type as the data. There's no point in storing it as an int, and if one of our data has got like, 55.5 in there, then the 0.5 gets dropped off. So we should make all of these floats. Let's give them all an um, initial value. Sum equals zero, min equals zero, and max equals zero. Okay, cool. Now, what about min index and max index? What type should they be? Have a think about this one and this is an interesting question. What type should mean index and max index be? Um, ints. Ints or floats? How many people think ints. floats? How many people think ints? Mean index and max index. Right? Anyone think there should be floats? Anyone think does it make any difference? Sure, actually it does, it makes a difference. The program won't even compile if you make them floats. They should be integers. Because min index and max index are counters. They tell you which element you're talking about. So they have to be an integer. If you try and use a float, your program won't actually even compile. And that's because the index for an array always needs to be an integer. All right, so these should be ints. Now, let's write our for loop. So our for loop is going to go through each element in the for loop. Now, the sum thing, if you remember, what did we do? We just took each element and we added it to sum. So let's do that. So sum plus equals to ages at position i. That's the zero, that's the first thing done. I said the zero thing, I mean the first thing. That's the first problem solved. That's adding up all the elements together to make the sum. Next of all, let's do min and max. So first of all, hmm, let's do min first of all. What should I set min to initially? What would be a sensible thing to set min to? Yeah, but what if I have, um, 
mean, yeah, what if mean is zero? Uh, would you make it again. equal to the first element? Yeah, I think it's better to set it to be the zeroth element. So either of those two answers are great answers, right? Either set it to be the zeroth element. In other words, the, 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 the zeroth element, the first element, zeroth element, okay? Alternatively, set it to be a really big number. So that the first time you go into the loop, it will immediately override it with, with the new value. If you set it to be zero, the problem is, like if you have 10, 20, 30, 40, none of those are less than zero. You see? So none of those will become the new minimum because they're never going to be less than zero. So zero will be the, the minimum, and it's not even in there. So a better thing to do is to go minimum equals the zeroth element, ages at position zero, like that. And then we can do the same thing for the max as well. All right, so we're going to give them the initial value of the zeroth element in the array. All right, alternatively set the minimum to be a really big number and the maximum to be a really small number. So sum equals the zeroth element, and then, because we're going element by element, you know, a, an optimization you could make here is, instead of starting i at being equals to zero, you could start i at one, because we already have done array element number zero. But we'll just do array element number zero again. So then, we check to see if ages at position i is less than the minimum value that I previously calculated. Okay, so that means I've just read one, so I've just been given a number which is less than the minimum. That means that the new minimum has to become ages at position y. And my min index is going to be equals to i, the position where it found the minimum at. All right, so i starts at 0. Ages at position i is the zeroth element in there. So then I'm saying that the, the one I've just read is less than the minimum, the one that I previously said was the minimum. So then the new minimum becomes ages at position i, and the new min index becomes i. Okay. And then we can do the same thing for the max. And then I think it's worth doing a desk check through this program. In other words, just running it on the, you know, without running the program, but just going through it line by line for a couple of elements in the array to make sure that it works. All right. There's my code. Let's try out this um, on the screen. Just you know, run through it line by line and make sure that it works. Can I grab a page maybe? Is this, can I use this page? No, actually, just won't the word. Oh yeah, we have all our variables here again. Let's wipe all of these out and do the same job here. But this time we shall follow the program step by step and see what happens, right? So, and let's not actually use the values that we have in our array. Right. How are we doing for time? Because I didn't want to do snow today. Just have about enough time then to do snow really quickly. 22, 26, 22, 18. Just do the first couple of elements here. 22, 26, 22, 18. Okay, let's look at our code and let's follow the code along and fill out these boxes as the for loop runs, right? So, what happens here? Sum is zero. Minimum is age is at position zero. Age is at position zero is 22. Maximum is equal to age is at position two, uh, zero, so that's 22. Max index is zero. Oh, I didn't even give them initial values, and max index should be zero. So I should give those initial values as well. Why, while we're doing this, let's put up another box here for i. Let me just make sure the video is captured that bit of the screen as well. Because this would be kind of useful to get. Yeah, more or less. There we go. 